Yeah, Rob, I know it's a sad, sad day. And you know what? I don't know if I'll be able to articulate the, the word that he deserves. But I'll try my best, you know, and I'm sure there's many people that are going to call in and and say their, say their lovely, kind words about Walter Smith. But I was actually at home today and I was full of enthusiasm today for the game. And then I just got word on the news that he had passed away. So it was horrible news to hear. But I can only be thankful that I was managed by him. And one of the main memories I have with Walter Smith is that he gave me my first opportunity to, to play for my country, which makes you very proud. And um, I always remember that before coming on, because there was a substitute, if you all remember the Kidding Cup that Scotland won, yeah. when, they called, when they called me up, that um, I was yawning on the bench. And I was just thought to myself, I hope Walter Smith doesn't see me yawning here because he might think I don't want to go on and impress him. And thankfully I did, obviously, scoring two goals in my debut. So I'll always remember him calling me up and giving me my first chance with Scotland. And then I got to, to work under him again at Rangers, a time that he brought back Rangers back to life. Probably they were struggling at a time. And he came in after Paul Le Guin and he was very, always very kind to me and very good with his words. He never put pressure on me. I was probably a young player, but you know, naive and inexperienced still. But if I was to say anything, you know, he was he was a great man and a great communicator. He wasn't just a great coach and a great manager, but he was great with people as well. And he was the sort of manager where I was on the football field and I knew if I made a mistake that I would think to myself, without him saying anything, that I knew he wouldn't be. He was a bit disappointed. And I would always try and impress him the, the next time I got the ball. I think that's just one thing that that man possessed. He had a great presence, even when he walked in the changing room or at half time or any time you met him in the corridor in training. And I think it's always the same, isn't it? With the, the bigger the presence, the bigger the loss feels when someone like Walter passes on. Of course, Rob, and, and I'm just fortunate enough that I, that I got to, to work under him. But and I I've got everything that I've heard today and looking at social media that there's nothing but kind words and it's a shame because you could you could probably you do this justice when you know yesterday or the day before or last week and how great a, a human being he was and it's so sad to hear but he did have great presence he just was one of them managers person that when they walked in the room he commanded the room and he managed the room very well and he could read the room very well and it's an honour to actually have, have been coached by him as well as managed. And obviously at Rangers, uh, he'll be a, a big part of the surroundings forevermore. Of course he will, he always will be. And I'm sure the Rangers will, will do their best to, to show that appreciation of him over the coming days and weeks and years. Um, and I think not just Rangers, you actually see the... Everybody, every football club in Scotland and yeah. even in England that are, are passing on their regard to him and his family. Because um, he, was, he wasn't a league coach. If you got to remember, he took Rangers to the UEFA Cup final and he held his own against the top, top coaches in Europe. Um, people don't for, people need to remember that, as well as he was so successful in Scotland. He was very successful in Europe as well and when he was down in England and and helped, you know, be assistant manager in places down there. So, yeah, no, he was he was a great human being. And again, I don't know what other words I can put into you in the next two or three minutes to actually make me express my feelings towards him. But as you say, it's the it's the depth of the the tributes, the bro the breadth of the tributes, where they've all come from, as well that that tells you so much about the scale of his achievements, but also about the popularity he had as well he did he was, he was very popular um, and you know what at a time he came at Rangers where we were struggling a little bit you know and he, and he came in and he revitalised not just the, the players they revitalised the, the fans again and the belief that we could win trophies again um, and he did that with the second it's hard enough doing it the first spell but your second spell is, is even a massive a bigger achievement and he was very popular within the group because if you were to speak to any of the players that have been managed or coached by us, by him or worked with him, that they would just they would be so popular and, and they would they would give nothing but great words and talk about him. 
Um, I know for a fact that the, the group that I was with, and even the ones, you know when you're a good manager and coach, and the ones that are not playing, they still like them and they still want to impress them. That's probably the biggest, you know, um, compliment I could give Walter Smith. It could probably be easy for me to say that because I wasn't playing, and a lot of players do this, where they'll blame the manager and they'll say I, won't, I wasn't playing because of him or the coaching staff, but I wasn't playing because, you know, I just wasn't, I wasn't up to the mark. Um, but I still, when I stepped onto that pitch, even though being a squad player, I still wanted to impress him and I knew that he was a top coach and a top manager and that's how popular he was. Not just with the start of the living, but with the full group. Chris, that's brilliant. Really good to hear from you. All the best uh, tonight as well. Good luck. OK, Rob, thank you. Rob, I forgot to say, I thought I'd maybe tell you a light-hearted story about um, Walter Smith because I think it's important that we, we share good memories about him. Uh, you can use it if you want and, and tell the story. If not, I'll tell it one day. But I just thought I'd tell you in this text message anyway. So I was in and out of the squad a lot. And I, w- I would only ever start the match or be off the be in the stand. Just because they had the likes of Novo, myself, Davis, even Whitaker played on the right-hand side. So there were too many right-hand-sided players. So I would always end up, you know, being the third... Um, one of the players in the stand. So what Walter Smith normally did was he would put the team sheet up in the home dressing room and the substitutes as well on the board and then he would come in for the meeting about 15 minutes later. So I walk in the the changing room obviously thinking that I'm not going to even be on the bench, I'm just going to be in the stand again. And I walk in and the lads all look at me and I look back and I look at the board and the starting 11, it's got my name on it. So I walk over to it and uh, I try and rub it out as if to say, surely that's not right. And all the boys are laughing. And as soon as that happens, Ali McCoy walks in the home dressing room and sees me doing it. And even he starts laughing. Um, so I'm thinking, right, OK, that's great, I'm playing. Uh, and we win the match and I'm man of the match and it was a good game. I can't remember who we were playing. So the following Monday, I'm walking down the corridor and Walter Smith is walking walking in the other direction and I'm thinking, what's he going to say to me here? Um, and he stops me in the corridor and he says, did you enjoy that on Saturday? And I said, yeah, it was good. And he says, well done, you played well. Um, you'll be playing this Saturday as well. So when I put the team sheet up in the dressing room, make sure you don't rub it out and just walked away from me. <laughs> so Coisty's actually done me one there, going into the manager's office and telling him. Um, so I just thought I'd tell you that little story in case you ever want to share it with anybody.